from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of the President of Guyana. In the highlights, the President calls for greater international support for Iwakurama. Fourth International Congress on Biodiversity hosted in Guyana and government to set up commission to regularize communal lands. Stay with us. <music> Nearly half of all known species live in forests, including 80% of biodiversity on land. While that alone should be enough reason for us to protect what we have, today the importance of forests has increased significantly. In fact, the Earth's survival now depends on how well we manage and conserve our forests. During the past week, Guyana hosted the 4th International Congress on Biodiversity of the Guyana Shield to discuss conservation, preservation, and sustainable management of the natural, rural, and urban ecosystems of the Guyana Shield. The Congress was declared open by President David Granger at the Arthur Chong Convention Center. Ladies and gentlemen, we have only one world. And the world has only one Guyana Shield. We have a responsibility as the trustees of the Guyana Shield. And that responsibility imposes on us the duty to protect and preserve our unique patrimony. The four Congresses that you've heard of in Venezuela in 2006, in Brazil in 2010, in Suriname in 2013, and now in Georgetown, Guyana in 2016, are necessary. But I agree with Professor Shalvik, they may not be sufficient to save our shield. Our obligations are onerous, but they must also be continuous, not episodic. They must go beyond the occasional congresses and presentations of scholarly papers. We wish to propose for your consideration a three-pronged approach to this challenge. This approach includes the establishment of a scientific research institute, the setting up of strong mechanisms for data and information sharing, and adequate investment and funding. The SHIELD provides environmental services to all humanity. The shields for us store carbon, not for six countries, but for the world. They are part of the lungs of the earth, reducing the greenhouse effect. Scientists and experts have been able to quantify these services. Incentives are needed to countries in the shield, particularly the three small sisters, Nagriyan, Suriname, and Guyana. I'm not saying the three big brothers can look after themselves, but we all need incentives. Green economies need investment to sustain protected areas and to generate sustainable energy. The absence of investment will place pressures on the government of the shield, particularly the three smallest states, if they are to move towards resource extraction and may tempt them perhaps to go into directions which lead to deforestation and destructive mining which can have adverse effects on our biodiversity. The President told scientists and board members of the International Biodiversity Society of the Guyana Shield that the Ford Congress has an important role to play in presenting the Shield's importance to the continent, the Caribbean, and around the world. This is a moment in eternity. We cannot allow it to slip by. This is the time for the scientific community, for governments, non-governmental organizations, and communities to forge partnerships to protect the shield's biodiversity while allowing states to leverage the shield's high endemicity, cultural diversity, and intact ecosystems for inclusive growth and secure futures. 
Past Congresses have been instrumental in bringing researchers, governments, natural resource practitioners, non-governmental organizations, and communities together to discuss issues and share experiences related to conservation and sustainable use of the Guyana Shield. It has enabled international cooperation such as the Guyana Shield Initiative and the Guyana Shield Facility. Most of us that are here are part of the Guyana Shield and as participants from these countries, we have an important role to play to make a proper assessment of our own environment, of its ecosystems and its biodiversity. This Congress will also provide another opportunity to make such an assessment and to tell our own societies and policymakers what we have discovered and what can be done. We will share the results once more and continue our quest. We must find ways to utilize what we have found and what we have not yet found to improve the way we live in our own ecosystems. Biodiversity is a very valuable asset, even though we have not yet found enough ways to reap its benefits. Meanwhile, the President also attended the 20th Anniversary Celebration Forum of the Iowa Krama Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development, an event which coincided with the Biodiversity Congress. The Head of State said that through Iowa Krama, Guyana has demonstrated to the world how a single small country can contribute to climate change mitigation while promoting sustainable development. Iwakrama was established in 1996 after the passage of the Iwakrama International Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development Act. That act of our parliament set out to develop, demonstrate, and make available to Guyana and the international community systems, methods, and techniques for the sustainable management and utilization of the multiple resources of tropical forests and the conservation of biological diversity. Iwakrama, therefore, is embedded in our territory. It's embedded in our law. It is embedded in our political culture. The center today is celebrating its 20th anniversary, the 20th anniversary of its legislation, not of its conceptualization and its gestation. The centers demonstrated how the forest can be used for conservation and scientific investigation. It has shown how a single small country could contribute to mitigating climate change while promoting sustainable development. Iokrama is the core of our country, Guyana's green heart. It is the cradle of our biological diversity, home to some of the world's richest and rarest flora and fauna. Guyana is a signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, a multilateral environmental agreement which calls for the conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its components, and the fair and equitable sharing of its benefits. President Granger said that these international commitments reinforces Guyana's resolve to ensure the harmonious development of the great natural capital of this country. Ukraine, with its rich biodiversity, is pivotal to positioning our economy onto a green growth pathway. It is our key to preserving our envi environmental patrimony. The pursuit of sustainable development cannot be achieved unless there is an un unobstructed obligation to the protection of our biodiversity. Eukrama, with yet undiscovered and unexploited resources, is essential to our economic existence. Ghana will continue to seek support for the establishment of an international institute for biodiversity at Eukrama to complement the work of the center's efforts and education on sustainable development. That institute will include state-of-the-art classrooms, conference rooms, labs, and accommodation facilities to accommodate visiting scientists, interns, and researchers from Guyana and around the world. Over the years, few, if any, of Kramer's contemporaries have survived. 
and this in itself is a model. Iwakurama has always had the support of its founding partners, the government of Guyana and the Commonwealth Secretariat. In fact, without exception, and Vanda mentioned this, all the presidents and governments of Guyana have steadfastly supported Iwakurama over the years. But survival was not easy, as the center was not insulated from the still enduring international financial crisis and the shift in donor priorities. Iwakurama is a unique reservation of 307 to 1,000 hectares of rainforest, and it is near to the geographical center of the Guyana Shield. President David Granger has announced that the government will work to establish a lands commission which will seek to rectify the existing anomalies and resolve the controversies surrounding thousands of hectares of communal lands across the country. The president made this announcement during his feature address at the opening ceremony of Coffee 250's fourth annual State of the African Guyanese Forum at the Critchlow Labour College. The head of state, who often refers to emancipation as the real birthday of the nation, since it was the single act that brought all the diverse peoples of the country together, said that the formation of villages started first with the purchase of land by freed Africans, and this trend was followed by all other ethnic groups. The president highlighted the value and contributions of the village movement, which he said are the cradles of the free economy and local democracy and called on the Coffee to Fifty Committee to pay closer attention to what is happening at the level of the villages. The villages were cradles not only of a free economy, an economy which gave rise to markets, village markets, but it was also the cradle of local democracy because the villagers learned to run their own communities. Speaking specifically on the condition of people of African descent, the president said that 20 months of the international decade has elapsed and there needs to be an organization dedicated to implement a program of activities aimed at addressing the interests of this group of people, which includes the demand for reparations. Emancipation brought no compensation or reparation for the inequities, the injustices and the injuries of enslavement. It brought no end to economic exploitation and ethnic discrimination. The United Nations stated that about 200 million people who identify themselves as being of African descent live in the Americas. Many millions more live in other parts of the world, outside of the African continent. The international community realized, belatedly perhaps, that enslavement indeed was a great crime against people of African descent. That the consequences have caused damage and that compensation or some form of reparation must be made to heal the wounds of enslavement. He assured that his government will work with non-governmental organizations which represent people of African descent in fulfilling the objectives of the decade. Speaking of the horrors of the system of slavery which Africans have had to endure, President Granger said that governments of the Caribbean, including that of Guyana, are insisting on an apology for the crime of enslavement and for the payment of reparations, but noted that this is not the time to agonize interminably about the conditions in which the country finds itself. This is the time to organize. This is the time to mobilize and not to agonize interminably about the condition in which we find ourselves as a nation. This is the time to organize and mobilize so at the end of the decade, the government and the Guyanese people as a whole could report confidently that they've achieved the objectives of the United Nations International Decade for People of African Descent. 
The main objective of the international decade is to raise awareness of the challenges facing people of African descent with the view of fostering discussions that could generate proposals for solutions to tackle these challenges. The program includes addressing areas surrounding expiation, education, equality, economy, and employment. The Coffee 250 Committee is made up of a group of Guyanese in the United States and Guyana who came together in 2013 to observe the 250th anniversary of the Burmese slave revolt, led by Coffee Against the Slave System. It is dedicated to encouraging socio-economic and cultural revitalization within African Guyanese communities and fostering of economic and racial equality in Guyana. August 6 marked 31 years since the death of Guyana's first executive president, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham, who was described by President David Granger as the author of social cohesion and the architect of national unity. The president joined a group of Guyanese last Saturday at a memorial ceremony at the mausoleum at the Seven Ponds in the Botanical Gardens to pay tribute to the late president. Forbes Burnham laid the foundation of our consolidation as a nation. He became premier of a divided colony in 1964 and transformed it into a more united and less unequal country. He inherited a society sundered by strife. He established order out of chaos, conciliation out of conflict and cooperation and confrontation, sorry. Forbes Burnham, in a public broadcast on the 19th of December 1964, after being sworn in as Premier, said, and I quote, This government holds that all the people of this country are equally important, whether they belong to a large group or a small group. To us, the Amerindians are important. To us, the Chinese are important. To us, the Portuguese are important. To us, the Europeans are important. To us, the mixed races are important. To us, the Africans are important. To us, the Indians are important. In short, all Guyanese are important and valued members of our community, and we cherish them and consider that, as a government, it is our duty and privilege to guard, protect, and further the real interests of all. End of quote. We hold these precepts to be paramount and permanent as we proceed along the path of national unity and as we pursue the ambition of social integration. The president said that Mr. Burnham was devoted to the task of rebuilding a society that was free of discrimination, distrust, and disorder determined to destroy the bastions of prejudice, social injustice, and inequality, and said that his government is committed to continuing on this path. Today, it's our government's duty, as it was 50 years ago, to protect the interests of all, and not of some. The people cannot be imprisoned in ethnic enclaves. The people are not the property of one or other political party. Forbes Burnham's ideas were for all time and for all Guyanese. He fought against the marginalization and segregation which prevailed in the colonial regime into which he was born. He sought to create a society of equality and inclusivity for posterity. It was through his visionary leadership and wise stewardship that the foundations of a just and cohesive society were laid. Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham served as Prime Minister of Guyana from 1964 and as President from 1980 until the time of his death in 1985 at the age of 62. He was a lawyer, a politician, a freedom fighter and a father of six children. <laughs> As Guyana prepares to transition into a full-fledged oil and gas economy, one private sector organization has already taken the lead in positioning itself to take advantage of the opportunities that the petroleum sector will present. 
On August 6, the president attended the launch of Geico Construction and General Services Incorporated Oil Spill Services at Nimes West Bank Demerara, where he commended the company on its forward thinking initiative. Guyana must prepare itself for the emergence of new economic sectors, and this is exactly what Geico is doing this afternoon. Foresight and entrepreneurship will allow businesses to benefit from local content. Strategic partnerships with regional and international firms will enhance the capability of local firms through the transfer of knowledge and technology. We cannot afford, therefore, to fold our arms and simply to wait for the anticipated bonanza. We must continue to build a balanced and diversified economy. Guyana, notwithstanding the local petroleum or the emergent petroleum sector, will continue to pursue green growth. Our green agenda will open multiple avenues for entrepreneurship in green construction, green employment, green enterprises, environmental services, sustainable energy generation, coastal zone management, solid waste management, wildlife management, and protected area systems. An entrepreneurial culture will allow Guyana to develop world-class products and services within our green economy. Despite the discovery of oil in Guyana and the expected production by the beginning of 2020, the president said that notwithstanding the local petroleum sector, Guyana will continue to pursue a green agenda. Today, we have invested on a supply boat that pretty much um, can work alongside oil rigs and supply them, not directly next to the oil rig, but they can actually supply and work as a supply boat that will take fu fuel or cargo to different vessel. This ship also has the capacity to work as a platform if there is an oil spill. So at the end of the day, when we finish everything on this, on this project, which will be in a month because we bought a set of other um, stuff, reels on booms, <coughs> me. it will all be affixed onto this vessel. So should there be a spill anywhere, we should be able to respond within 24 hours. Today we have booms, skimmer, workboat, spill kit. We also have a set of storage tanks that we're putting together. So should there be a spill in the river, one will wonder when you start skimming the oil off the water, what you do with the product. We have the capacity now to put um, these storage tanks on our barges, go out to the spill area, and skim the oil, put it in those tanks and bring it back to shore. Somewhere along the line, we're gonna move to a different stage and we're hoping to have that done shortly. Because after the spill and after you would have get all this contaminated material, all this contaminated oil, what do you do with it? You create another monster. We're in the process right now of putting together all our documentation so we can seek the requisite approval to put an oil spill facility, and we refer to it as a soil remediation um, facility. Apart from bringing much needed innovation into the fledgling oil sector, this project is in keeping with the government's green agenda. The green agenda will open multiple avenues for entrepreneurship in green construction, green employment, green enterprises, environmental services, sustainable energy generation, coastal zone management, solid waste management, wildlife management, and protected area systems. And now let's take a look inside the President's Diary. During the week, President Granger was paid a courtesy call by Elisa Hamilton at the Ministry of the Presidency. Hamilton, who is a recipient of a presidential scholarship, will be departing Guyana next Thursday for Jamaica to pursue studies in the field of medicine at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. On August 7, the President attended the opening ceremony of the Upper Mazaruni 19th Annual District Games at the Camarang Sports Ground in Kayuni Mazaruni and lauded the hosting of the event and called on other regions to replicate the games. The games saw sportsmen and women from several regions, some of them having to travel for several days to participate in the event. The participants were identified by their own flags and colors and will over the days of the competition participate in athletics, archery, volleyball, swimming and other novelty games. Everywhere I go in Guyana, from region 1 to region 10, I tell them about Upper Mile Games. 
How these villages come, people walk sometimes one or two days, sometimes even longer, to reach the destination. They come on foot, they come on by canoe. Every village has its own pavilion, every village has its own flag, every village has its own identity. And you come here with friendly games, girls and boys from all over this region. There's no other part of Guyana where we can see 10 or 12 villages coming together voluntarily with their own resources to have fun, to have games like Upper Mind. And that brings us to the end of this week's program. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website, www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and productive rest of the week. Goodbye.